0.3 square vertical plate at a fixed temperature of 55 Celsius is being cooled in a room with air at ambient conditions. What is the heat loss from one surface of the plate? And B, what is the total heat loss from the plate assuming the thickness is negligible? So first things first, let me go ahead and draw our flat plate. My amazing drawing skills. Okay, there we go, I have a vertical flat plate and it's 0.3 by 0.3. So let's go ahead and put here 0.3. three meters, the temperature is 55. And the this is at room temperature. So you can choose what you want. I chose 20 Celsius. Okay, so we know that energy is gonna flow from the plate to the ambient conditions, right? That's a, something we know for certain. But think about it, what's happening here is that the molecules on the bottom are going upwards and they actually meet the molecules that are going from the halfway board, this guy's going to go upwards. So they're kind of interacting with each other there. And that is what makes these, the system more complicated than it might look on, at first glance. So that's why we need to use this kind of equation here instead of just a simple <clears throat> equation to solve and find H. Okay, so what are we doing? We are grabbing uh, Grassoff and Prendel. We need to grab these two guys so that we can solve for the coefficients on the null correlation. Uh, Grassoff, we learned how to, to calculate print that we can get off the, the table, right? Oh, by the way, the F here is to say that this is at film temperature, okay? Prandtl and Grassoff at, at film temperature. This F here, this F here. Um, what is our film temperature? Well, between 20, uh, 55 and 20, that's gonna be 37.5, which is 310 in Kelvin. So I'm gonna jump into table A5 and grab properties for um, air at 310.5. Okay, uh, I have to interpolate, so 310, 310 for collectivity in Prandtl. And I've also grabbed the kinematic viscosity as opposed to the dynamic viscosity, because that means I don't have to grab the density and the dynamic one. You're obviously welcome to grab these two instead of the kinematic. I just chose to do this and change it up a bit. The other thing we're gonna need, remember how we calculate Grasshoff, Grasshoff, Grasshoff number. Um, let's write down the two forms, gravity, beta, delta T, x to the third divided by viscosity or gravity beta, delta T, x to the third divided by kinematic viscosity, right? So, Check it out. I've have I have this from uh, the drawing. We have this from the problem. We grab this from the table. We have this from life. This is gravity on Earth, and we don't know beta. But beta, this air is an ideal gas, right? So because it's an ideal gas, or I should say, because air, to make the sentence a bit better, more correct because air can be approximated to an ideal gas, then I can find beta by doing one over T film, right? As long as T film is in Kelvin. So one over 310.5, that's my beta. So I have everything I need to calculate my Grassoff and that's precisely what I'm about to do. My Grassoff is, um, I'll use this form here, okay? So 9.81 meters per second squared, Difference in temperature, 60 minus 25, oh no, sorry, 55 minus 20. Um, characteristic, I forgot beta. One over 310.5, delta T. Uh, what is my characteristic, characteristic length of a plate? It's always the length of the plate, right? So this guy here, well, they're both the same in this case, but. If there weren't, it will be this guy here, 0 0.3. 0 0.3 meters to the third. And I'm dividing this whole thing here by 16.7 times 10 to the six squared.
this turns out to be, what is the tau of root? One point oh seven times ten to the eighth. Okay, and we now need to find Rayleigh number. Remember, because we're the table that gives us the coefficient gives us in terms of Rayleigh, which is literally just graphs of times Randall. So it's one point oh eight times what is the Randall point seven oh six, which is seven point five five. Okay, so we have really number, we have the multiplication between the two. So now what we need to do is we need to find what is the co what are the coefficients that we're about to plug in to find mass. And we need to find C. And we need to find M. So 7.1, again, this table should be on your lecture slides. Uh, we're looking at a vertical plate, so we're not really interested on these things. From over here, we're just looking at the top here. And among the vertical plates, I'm looking for a grass, a Rayleigh number that is so grass of times Fredo, that is what is ours? Seven times 10 to the seventh, right? So I'm looking for something that's times 10 to the seventh, seventh order of magnitude. And that will be right here, right? Between four and nine. So if that's the case, then I'm using C, which is 0.59, and I'm using M, which is a quarter. Okay, so this will be 0 0.59 times uh, grass of times friend, that's really right? So we already have that, it's already done. And a quarter. Muscle equals uh, 54.99 something, so let's go ahead and do 55. And we know Nusso is equal to H times characteristic length divided by K in characteristic length in this case is the length of the plate. So therefore H equals 4.95. Okay, now that we have this, then it's easy to find what is the um what is the heat flux coming out of one side of the plate, right? Heat flux coming out of the plate. So part A, what is the heat flux coming from one side of the plate? Well, that is H times A times delta T, H being 4.95, A being 0.3 times 0.3 meters, and this being 55 minus 20. So this is 15.6. That is our first answer. Okay. What about the second part? What does the second part ask us for? Uh, part B, let's go up and check. Part B. What is the total heat transfer from the plate assuming the thickness is negligible? So now, we're not only interested on the part, uh, the green part with the arrows there, we're also interested in the whole thing. So let's go ahead and draw, let me draw this part. So that this is very, very small. It's actually some negligible thickness here. So the thickness here is dx, so it's a very small thickness. So when they say that, what they're saying is, ignore this heat transfer from this side here, and also ignore the heat transfer from this side here. Okay, the first one being this one would be would be a vertical uh, plate, so it will be, if not the same, very similar to what we just calculated. And this one here being a horizontal plate, so this would take would make us have to go back and calculate h once again, right? So instead of that, we're just looking at the q coming out of this guy here, of this side here that we just calculated, plus the q coming out of the other side of the plate that we can't see 
from my droid. So if one one side gives us 15.6, then two sides are gonna give us double of that, which is 31.2. Right, so uh, if one side Two sides will double that. So Q total or Q from two sides equals Q from one side times two. And keep an eye out on your uh, question, weekly question, to see if you would need to multiply by two or not, whatever you find. So that's 31 point to watts. All right, questions on this problem. 